Welcome back to the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. Drew Mandel, Ezra Ginsberg with you on this Saturday morning. We're thrilled to welcome to the program Winnipeg Jets defenseman Dylan Samberg. Dylan, good morning. Nice and prompt. I appreciate that. Are you the kind of guy who's usually on ice, you know, 10, 15 minutes before practice begins? Because I got to tell you, in my experience with uh, professional athletes, getting somebody five minutes early does not necessarily happen every day. (laughs) First of all, thanks for having me, guys. But, uh... Yeah, I guess this year, especially with uh, warming up Hellebuck, I had to get on the ice pretty early, so I guess I just got used to it. Yeah, the, well, we appreciate you joining us nice and early. You know, you mentioned, you know, what's that like, warming up, you know, Connor Hellebuck? I mean, there's so, we spent a lot of today's show talking about Connor Hellebuck, his future in Winnipeg. Of course, he's uh, a year away from unrestricted free agency, but you guys obviously have that sort of close bond. How did that, how did that come to be? How did that, uh, how did you end up getting that uh, sort of honor, uh, let's say? Um, it was early on in the year. Uh, I got on the ice early and they were looking for a shooter. So I said, I'd, I'd shoot on him and, uh, I guess he liked the way I was shooting on him. So he just decided to stick with me the rest of the year. And I started to enjoy it as well. But, you know, right off, right off the hop, it was like, this is crazy. I'm shooting on a Vesna winning goalie. And that it took some time to get over that. But once I got over that, it was good. And uh, it became really easy because we bond over fishing and hunting and stuff like that. And, that, and Connor, Connor knew that you weren't going to keep, you were going to keep that puck low, right? He knew he, you weren't going to bring it above the waist, right? Yeah. I, I made sure I kept it away from his, from his face. Is is that the big off season uh, activity for you? Hunting, fishing is that is that generally how you're spending the off season? In addition to, of course, all whatever training you're doing. Uh, yeah, I like well hunting. Uh, that's more of in the fall, right? I want to get back up into Winnipeg, but uh, as far as fishing, yeah, I love to fish. So uh, my dad and I are heading up to Lake of the Woods actually uh, end of June here Wonderful. for a nice little trip. But uh, I also like to golf as well, and um, pretty much that's about it: golfing and fishing. Not 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 a bad way to spend the off season, I would say. But you also took a bit of a European vacation, and that was part of the reason why we wanted to talk to you. Your experience playing for Team USA over at the World Hockey Championships. I mean, those of us in North America, I don't think we really appreciate or really understand just how big of a deal the World Hockey Championships are. Uh, you know, over in Europe. So I, 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 this is your first time, I believe, at the World Hockey Championships. You have international experience playing in the World Juniors, of course. But just sort of how would you summarize your time? How would you sum up your time and the just experience in general playing for Team USA this uh, this past uh, spring over overseas? It was awesome. I uh, I enjoyed every second of it. And uh, it was cool. We got to see some, some cool places along the way. We started in Munich, Germany, and then uh, finally went on to Finland. But, uh, yeah, you know, any, any chance you can get to play for your country, uh, it's definitely really special. And you know, I cherish that. And I was fortunate enough that we had a, we had a really good group there that connected right, up, right away, right off the hop. And, you know, we, uh, we had a really good preliminary round. Um, first one of our, the first U.S. team to ever go 7-0, and which was really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, the medal rounds didn't go as planned or how we wanted it to go. But overall, it was a great experience. I'm glad I went. You know, Dylan, you mentioned you mentioned the preliminary round. We have to talk about the overtime goal. I think you knew that that question was coming because you know we were sharing that on the illegal curve. Uh, well, I think all Jets fans were sharing that on their social media accounts. A huge goal. It was against uh, Sweden. I believe that was the game, uh, the last game before the quarterfinals. As you mentioned, the U.S. was was undefeated. Like, just take us back because I mean, obviously, you know, the team success uh, is is paramount, right? But that must have just been an incredible feeling for you to score that OT winner. Yeah, it was uh, it was very cool, and you know it was it was good for our team, but uh, yeah, it was just uh, I'm not much of a three on three guy, so <laughs> I just uh, looked at one of the guys in our team, Prudovich, and he told me because he's more of a three on three kind of player like that, and I I was like, what do I do out there? He goes, just keep moving your feet, and you'll be fine. And sure enough, it worked out. So. There you go. That's all. It seems like a pretty good three on three philosophy. Uh, yeah. Whenever it's happening, Winnipeg Jets defenseman Dylan Sandberg, our guest on the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. Have you scored an OT, an OT winner before that? Uh, I did in, in high school. In high school. Uh, that would that would have been the last one. Yep. <laughs> and I'm sure the feeling is uh, just as ecstatic in high school or as a professional. You know, when you uh, when the, when, the, when you see, turn around and you see your teammates coming to swarm you, it's got to feel uh, got to feel pretty special. Yeah, that it was it was awesome and. Uh, it was good for USA hockey, uh, you know, to see, I feel like every year we're climbing the ranks, you know, uh, on the world ranking there in, in for the world, but, uh, 
you know, that was, that was a really special moment. And uh, I was glad I was, I was glad I was there to, to have it happen to me. So. Obviously the, the world hockey championships, you know, are, are a different animal than the NHL. You play on the bigger ice surface, all that jazz, but you know, what can you take, what can you learn from that kind of experience that then translate to helping your game at the NHL level uh, on a regular basis? Is it just sort of sitting in the room and picking the brain of some of your teammates and some of the other players, or is there just, or is there, you know, sort of nuances that you can learn from uh, playing on the bigger ice surface that maybe subtly can translate into, into the NHL game. Yeah. Um, I feel like for me personally over there, I was able to learn more about my offensive side that I, uh, my game, which was a huge help and great for my confidence. And, um, you know, I was put in different situations to situations as well, which was very helpful for me. And that, uh, you know, you have a little bit more time on the ice out there. Uh, it was kind of like between a regular sheet and an Olympic sheet. So, uh, just and then kind of trying to find areas where you, where you have more time skating away from from guys uh, just to give yourself that extra half a second. But uh, I feel like for for me, especially the, the offensive side was was really definitely a, a big boost. Dylan, realize that, you know, you recently got back from from Europe, um, but we've got game four of the, the Vegas, Florida series t- uh, tonight. Florida obviously won uh, game three in in overtime dramatic fashion. I just wanted to ask, you know, first off, how much of, of the final that you've been watching, but also like, you know, you guys obviously weren't able to, to get past the Golden Knights. Um, but are, are, I would imagine that you're not at all surprised that the Golden Knights are in the Stanley Cup final. I mean, they're, they're, they were the best team in the Western Conference uh, during the regular season. But just what have you thought of, of the Golden Knights run, especially considering that that's who obviously, you know, you guys faced in the first round? Yeah, I mean, they got a, they got a great team over there and um, they were tough to play against. Uh, a lot of high end players uh, that can make a lot of really good plays and you know, there's, there's a reason that they made it that far. And, um, you know, it, it's, you, you want to be there and uh, be in their shoes, but still, still fun to watch. And, you know, um, I'm hoping down the road, we can, we can eventually get to that point. Dylan Sandberg, Winnipeg Jets defenseman, our guest on the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. Now, Dylan, obviously, uh, as as you mentioned, you know, the series against the Golden Knights didn't go uh, the way you wanted it to. And then, of course, at the end of the season, there was, uh, you know, some pointed comments, I would say, from head coach Rick Bonus, and uh, some of the players rebutted those comments, you know. You know, given the, the the end of the season, the, given the disappointing sort of end, you know, how does the team sort of spend this off season regrouping and retooling and sort of refocusing to come back next year and, and have improved results? Um, I, I, I just think we we have a good team here, and everyone knows that. And uh, you know, at some point, it's going to work out for us. Just. Uh, unfortunate the past couple of years you know with two years ago not making playoffs this year making playoffs and um i think i think we're on the up but uh yeah we'll see we'll see what happens are you in touch with a lot of the guys in the off season uh yeah i'm in touch with a few of them i i train here with uh, nate schmidt so uh i get a full year of schmitty all the time <laughs> so, uh, I think it's awesome and he's got his he, he's got his daddy hat on these days he does yeah which is awesome awesome to see um He's very proud of that, and I've been talking. I talked to him the other day about that, and um, he said it, it's really exciting. But uh, I talk with uh, Brendan Dillon a lot, uh, Neil Pionk. We have a fantasy baseball league, so we keep we keep in contact through that. A fantasy, but you see, I was going to expect you to say fantasy football. I assume you guys have a fantasy football league as well. But are you a baseball guy more than a football guy? Uh, I was more of a. They need an extra guy this year. <laughs> You're the and, free uh, money, is is what is what it is. Yeah, and I was like, you know what? I'll I'll give it a shot. And uh, so, and I'll, I'll be living down here in the cities, right next to Target Field, where the where the Twins play. So maybe it'll get me out to some more games. There you go. Not a bad way to spend. It's a beautiful stadium. Not a bad way to spend a day. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it's any consolation, Dylan, I I lost my first six games in my fantasy baseball league to start the year. So as long as you can beat that level, then you're then you're doing better than I am. Uh, yeah. Dylan Sandberg, our guest here on the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. Dylan wanted to ask you about um, your last season because obviously that was your first full year 
uh, in the NHL. And, you know, we do the, our post game shows in addition to the, the Saturday show. And, you know, we talked about you a lot because I just thought, you know, as the season progressed, you just continued to get better and better and better. And you, and you mentioned Brendan Dillon and it, it seemed like, you know, he, he took you under his wing, not, not, not to mention, you know, some other players that took you under the wing, but especially, uh, on, on the back end there. So just, can you just kind of, you know, for you, like, what was it your personally, what did you feel like, you know, how did you progress throughout the, the regular season and obviously getting your first taste of the, the NHL playoffs? Um, yeah, no, I felt like I progressed uh, from the beginning of the year on and uh, I just felt more confident the more I got to play. And um, we had a really good group there and everyone's, especially in the back end, everyone's pulling for everyone. And, you know, nobody is ever afraid to reach out if they need anything or want to ask any questions, but, uh, and, you know, the, especially with Dylan, Pionk, um, Schmidt, they're, you know, always asking me, talking with me and I just felt more comfortable as the year went along. And, um, you know, it, with, within the, within the good group that we had, it made it a lot easier. And, uh, I felt like I relaxed more, started to play, just, uh, try to play sound defensively. And, you know, I felt like I progressed as the year went on. You know, you talk about that, you know, and, and your progression as the year g- goes on. Is it sort of a gradual where the game sort of slows down for you as, as, when you get your, you know, first real consistent taste of NHL action? Or is it just sort of one day snap and then everything sort of slows and you begin to sort of uh, process the game li- like you would have, let's say, at the college level or, or you know, when you were really comfortable in, in a role on any team that you previously played on? Yeah, I think it's it's more of like a gradual thing, I would say, for me at least. Uh, I just, uh, you know, just learn every little bit about the game day by day, whether that be in practice, in a game. And uh, I just feel like when the more you're in certain situations, the more comfortable you feel down the road. And I felt like that was very helpful for me. In terms of a off-season priority, you mentioned that you know playing overseas allows you to sort of you know playing at the World Hockey Championships maybe allows you to focus on a little bit more of an offensive style of game. Is that something you're looking to sort of fine tune a little bit? I mean, you were you really uh, you know sort of settled very nicely into that role that you were playing uh, as a physical defenseman for the Jets, but still with some upside on the offensive side of things. Is that something you're looking to uh, as a priority this off-season? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, I always want to work on my offensive game, uh, anything I can do to help contribute. And um, I feel like uh, the coaches all year are always harping on the D to, you know, join the rush and, you know, break out your offensive side more and um, be comfortable with being in the offensive zone. And I feel like that's definitely a a big thing for me this summer is just focusing on the offensive side of things and, you know, being more comfortable in the offensive zone. And I feel I felt like the world championships really helped me with that. Dylan, I wanted to ask you about Josh Morrissey because obviously he's been a great defenseman for a long time uh, for the Jets, but this was, uh, you know, above and beyond that, uh, putting together a, a career season, should have been nominated for the Norris, but we're not going to get into that. Um, but I mean, this is this is your opportunity um, to, to just gush about about Josh because, I mean, what, what he was doing on a day in day, day out basis, it was, it was kind of, I mean, and there's a lot of good players on the jets yourself included, but you kind of ran out of, um, you know, things to say about the the way Josh was playing. It was just incredible. It seemed like, you know, he had two points every single game, but just what did you see, you know, being on the ice with him this year? Because he was just, I, I mean, I think the, inc- the word incredible doesn't really, uh, you know, do, do justice what he was doing on the ice this year. Yeah, no, he's, he's a great player. And, um, you know, he was, he was fun to watch and, and like learn from. And, uh, you know, some, at some points in the year, you just sat back on the bench and you're, you're sitting back and you're watching him. You're like, this is unbelievable what this guy's doing. And, uh, he just plays with so much confidence and he plays free and you can see that when he's out there and, um, he was a great player for us. He had a great year and, you know, um, great guy and can't say enough good things about him. Dylan, the business side of the game is never that far away. And of course, for the first time, you are a restricted free agent this off season. You know, how are you approaching that? Are you sort of just out of my out of sight, out of mind, and you'll get a call from your agent one day and, and, and that'll be that? Or is that something that you are sort of, uh, you know, you're aware of and it's at the forefront as you're going through your off season uh, experience? Yeah, I mean, you're always going to be aware of it. But uh, I feel like for me at this point, I'm just, you know, my uh, main focus is next year and uh, what I can do to to come into the season a lot better and um, 
stronger and you know what I can do to elevate my game in, in certain points. And uh, I mean, the contract that'll, that'll come, but uh, at some point and just try not to worry about it too much right now and just focus on how I can get better. Uh, so I, you, just, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Drew. I was going to say, go ahead, as you'll ask, and I'll ask after. No, I was going to, you know, uh, ask a more lighthearted uh, question as opposed <laughs> to Drew asking the the hard hitting contract <laughs> questions, uh, Dylan. But you mentioned, you know, you know, cl you're close with Nate Schmidt in in Minnesota training with him. I was going to ask you, like, you know, when are you going to be available for for babysitting duties? Are you going to wait until uh, you know Harvey's a little bit older? <sighs> I don't know. I, I'll have to ask Schmidt to see if he uh, let me be around Harvey. <laughs> If if you need any kids to practice on, uh, both Ezzy and I have uh, have young families, and you're you're welcome to come over and babysit for our kids as a test run before before Schmidt uh, Nate's kids, if you want. Yeah, I might have to because I don't think I've ever. <laughs> I, think, I think Dylan's got better things to do. Drew. I would hope so. I think <laughs> golfing, fishing, and hunting both sound more appealing uh, than either of the, than any of the options we've brought up so far. Uh, you know, Dylan, a couple more, and then we'll let you get on with your Saturday morning. We really appreciate your time. You know, I, I'm sure you're not a stranger to the noise and the, and, and it's on every team. So it's not a unique to Winnipeg thing about players coming and going. And, you know, when the season ends, uh, there's always going to be new faces in the dressing room and guys that have been there before won't necessarily be there at the start of next year. You know, uh, you know, how do you sort of handle that? Do you uh, you just realize it's sort of part of the business? It's nothing you can control, or do you just sort of uh, you know are are you sort of glued to the uh, to the news regarding uh, guys that you've been teammates of yours for a long time? Um, yeah, it, it, it'll definitely be different. You know, uh, it's different every year. Uh, over the past three years that I've been in pro mm -hmm. hockey, I've seen a bunch of new faces, mm -hmm. which is obviously exciting. You know, you get to meet a lot of new guys and uh build a lot of friendships which is great but uh you know some, some of the guys might be it might be weird because uh, you've been around for three years and then you might not see them but uh you know i think we got a good room and um whoever comes in i, I think we'll we'll flourish there you go it's good that's good to hear i'm sure jets fans appreciate that uh that assurance from you from you given yeah. the, the way the season ended last year because uh, you know that's the problem with pro sports or the reality of pro sports is that at the end of the year with the exception of one team there's probably about another 31 teams that are a little bit disappointed with how everything turned out that's the, the reality of it all uh dylan we'll, we'll let you go on this last one i i was reading up on your bio and 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 obviously i'm familiar with you but i gotta uh -oh. tell you uh what i did not know is that you are a super fan of dude perfect so and that would be according to uh, the good folks at usa hockey that is something that you would be looking to do if you weren't a hockey player is be doing trick shots with dude perfect is that right that would be really cool that mm -hmm. is definitely in my bucket list uh yeah i i remember this goes way back i was been been watching youtube videos of them for a long time but uh no i, I enjoy the trick shots and um even uh during covid when we we're up here i set up uh in winnipeg during the season i set up some some pots and pans and did some ping pong trick shots so uh, to, uh, to... successfully successfully yeah okay. yep. i have a couple videos so there you go that's the important yeah. part you got it nice. something... we all had to do weird things during covid i think that's exactly. what we're learning about there but uh sir, as long as you got some success out of it but uh yeah, yeah those guys are pretty cool i i would agree with that uh you know you dude perfect definitely unfortunately on this saturday morning you got two duds instead of a bunch of dudes but uh, we appreciate you uh you nonetheless how uh, long, is, how long drew, has drew been sitting on that one dylan i feel like he's had that one in his back pocket <laughs> for a while now. he dug that one up yeah i don't know I tweeted about it also, so I'm just reusing my tweets uh, in the course of the conversation. But, you know, I appreciate uh, you, you guys willing to humor me uh, as I get my not-so-funny puns uh, out in the course of this interview. Uh, Dylan, we really appreciate your time this morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great rest of the offseason. When do you head back to Winnipeg? Do you know yet, or is it probably still some uh, time? Not entirely sure yet, but uh, somewhere early September. Well, we look yes, forward to so. we look forward to catching up with you uh, again real soon and uh, hit it straight. What's what's the handicap? Uh I actually just gotten I downloaded this app called Eighteen Birdies because I've never known my handicap before. So, um, I usually play around a two. <laughs> so, you don't know your handicap and you're a two. Yeah, I've <laughs> never actually done my handicap. So I got one of my buddies told me I got to download this app. So I just played my first round on it the other day. Well, it's, it's funny, Dylan, because Drew and I combined are 200. So uh, <laughs> you, you have a speed by 198. Beautiful. Dylan, thank you, buddy. Have a great rest of the summer. Great off season. We'll catch up again real soon. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Appreciate Take it. Care. Thanks a lot, Dylan. Yep. 
Dylan Sandberg, Winnipeg Jets defenseman, joining us this morning on the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. Thanks for listening to this broadcast from Illegal Curve Hockey. For more great Illegal Curve content, subscribe to the Illegal Curve YouTube channel, follow at Illegal Curve on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and visit your online home for hockey in Winnipeg, IllegalCurve.com.